strikes. Rodon offers up perhaps one of the nastiest sliders around. Easy to see why once you see it come out of his hand. He's got a huge break on it. Reddick waiting, and now the pitch. Oh, and it's not often you see a guy like that flail so badly up there, but that was a great pitch for route number one. Always tough hurt. for one of these base the umpires base. to mention out there. Looking at the replay, I think he got it right, so that's a tip of the cap for the blue. Brantley stands at first with one out. High and deep to right center. Garcia sprinting after it. He gets there and makes a fine running play for the second out. Batting fourth, the third baseman, number two, Alex Bledsoe. So we're runner at first here. Here with two gone in the inning, and that'll bring up the LSU product, Alex Bregman. Hit in the air down the right field line. But this will wind up being a foul ball. A runner on first with two away. And he'll try to hold up in time, but to no avail as he went around, and the inning is over. Astros leave one. Nothing in the Astros' first chance. Time now to check the starting lineup card for the Shy Sox in this one. Mark DeRosa, how do they go about keeping this series alive? You know, taking a look at this lineup, Matt, one thing you have to take into account is the variables that you can't control. And that's the wind. It's blowing in. It's howling in. You're going to see some guys in this lineup change their approach, not be looking for that launch angle and trying to drive the ball out of the ballpark. It's going to take a big man to put one over the wall today. Now the three and two pitch. Really good at bat here from the leadoff hitter as he'll force him to throw another one. Another full count offering on its way. Line drive, base hit down the line. Running hard, he's digging for second. And the White Sox get something going here. It's a leadoff double. No doubt about it. He was looking fastball all the way there. And that's exactly what he got. Got the barrel out front and just blasted it down the line for an extra base hit. Nobody out. Runner in scoring position. Bregman is under it as he puts it away for round number one. Batting third. The runner at second base. here with one man okay. out. I'll play you. This one's down to third. And there are two away now. Four. Man at second here with two away, and that'll bring Daniel. forward the power bat Three. of Daniel Polka. A ball and two strikes now. A one-two pitch. Got him swinging as he runs the fastball by him to end the inning. White Sox leave one, and this is still a nothing-nothing ball game. Carlos Correa now. He'll get us started in the top of the second. The 2 2. Now he extends nicely, and this ball is driven to right field and deep. But that'll be off the right field wall. He'll get it into second. But it won't be in time, and it's a leadoff double. That's what happens when that a slider is. doesn't do what you the want it to do. That was just one of those cement mixers, kind of just spinning but doing nothing. Nice job of punishing that pitch and picking up two bags on one swing. In now, Robinson Chirinos. Still even at two and two. The two two one more time. Good opposite field power here taken high and deep to right. And that one is gone. A 
two run blast to straight away right field his first homer here in the series and the Astros have taken a two to nothing lead. I can tell you one thing you might get away with throwing a ball in that location in the minor leagues but when you get one up like that in the zone right over the plate against these guys you're going to get exactly what he got a really bad result. Stepping in now Tyler White. High and deep to right center. Garcia on the move. He gets to it and makes the catch for the first down. Batting eight. Standing the in, center. Jake Marisnik. He'll get to take Jake. his first cuts here. Marisnik. The 1-1. One, one. Line drive, and that's a base hit into center field. So striding forward now, Jason Kipnis. First shot for him here with a runner at first now and one away. The next 3 2. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And he pushed it just a bit too much. It'll wind up a foul ball. Mariznik, a runner at first with one gone in the inning. Line drive to left. Pham will range to his left as he tracks this one down in left center for the second out of the inning. Here's Michael Brantley. One for one after a single this first time up. The 2-1. Lifted the other way out to left center. Pham on the move. But he's not going to get this one. It's into the gap. Now this will rattle up against the wall. He pulls into third safely as also on the play a run comes across to score. Now batting. The right fielder. Coming to the plate Josh. now. Josh Reddick. Yes. He looks to bounce back after striking out his last time up. You know Matty tough to go down looking right there especially in a long at bat. I kind of tip my hat to the fact that he didn't go into uber swing mode. Well the left fielder's on it and that retires the side. But they strike for three in the inning. Two on this two-run home run. On to the bottom of inning number two. It's now 3-0 Houston. Stepping in, Eric Thames. As they'll have five, six, and seven here to start the home half of the second. Hey, we're still in the early stages in this one. They're only down by a couple of runs. But it's really key for this leadoff guy to try to get on and get a big inning started. Even count, two balls and two strikes. Here now the 2-2. Had to sit back on the changeup, and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. I don't think he's going to triple up on changeup right there. He seemed to have gotten the timing down on that second one. Popped him up. Chirinos is under it. He's got it one away. Batting six, the third baseman, Yohan Moncada. Next to bat will be the Cuban import, Yohan Moncada. Bases are empty, one man out. Nope. And that's ball three now as it just misses below the zone. So let's take a peek at our umpiring crew in this one. Behind the plate is Gary Simmons. You know, Dero, Gary Simmons, he's, he's one of those umpires. He'll give you one thing or the other. At times, his zone can be a little wider than he's a little more strict north and south. But he's a pretty consistent umpire. I just, I, the key, Dan, is be consistent. You want to give him the inside half, I'm okay with that. But then you can't give him away. If you're going to stay east-west, you better pick one side. So the Bad breaking seven. ball locked him up there. The Yohan Moncada well, becomes like out number two this Can't inning. Go. So bases are empty here with two gone. And in the bat next, the catcher, Wellington Castillo. And a slider swung on and missed, and the side is retired. One, two, three, go the White Sox. They trail in this one, three nothing.
Stepping into the box, Jose Altuve. Fly down in his first at-bat, so make him 0 for 1 so far. One of the keys to securing a win, they want to keep the pressure on and try to build that lead as much as they can moving into the later innings. Count full, three balls and two strikes. Halfway to 100 pitches, here it is. Fastball swung on and missed for the first out. It looked like this at bat had the makings of a leadoff walk when it started 3-0. So that's a good job not Alex. to give in and battle back to earn the strikeout. That's not always easy to do. Into the box now, Alex Bregman. Fouled away. Tried to hold up there. Appeal down to first and no swing. It's ball two. The 2-2. Two -two. Popped him up. Moncada over to his right. And he brings it in on the warning track. The batter, number one. Shortstop, Carlos Correa. Now in the box, Carlos Correa. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Two out, nobody on. Breaking ball that time that misses out of the zone. That's a great take right there. Great pitch recognition to let that one go. Opposite handed, that's coming across the plate. You might think he got a shot to stay inside that one. Now the three and two pitch. Skied into straightaway right. Thames is underneath this one. As he puts this one away, the side is retired. Astros go down one, two, three, but they lead it three nothing. Stepping in, Tim Anderson. He'll be the one to greet Justin Verlander to start the inning. The one two. It's a high fly ball headed for the left field corner. If it stays fair, it's gone. And that ball will stay fair, and it's gone. A home run. So a solo shot down the line in left. His first homer so far in the series. And the White Sox are back in it. It's a 3-1 to one ball game. Hey, listen, there's an old adage in baseball that solo home runs won't kill you. This is one of the top hitters in the... That lineup. So a home run, a solo home run right here, it's not the end of the world. Standing in now, Leury Garcia. Good job to spoil that one away, and he stays alive. And it's fouled away. The 2-2. Two -two. And he fouls this one off. The 2-2 two -two one more time. Smoke toward the hole. And a backhanded reach at first, but he can't flag it down. Hey, guys, he was obviously trying to bury that slider down and in. Nice execution by the batter right there. Keeping his hands inside, fighting it off for a nice base hit. Good breaking ball there. Laid off for the second strike. Now a swing and a miss as he picks up another one. Make it four strikeouts already, and there's your first out. 
the batter. Stepping up now, Yomer Sanchez. Friend. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Out already, and there are two gone in the inning. So digging in now, Jose Abreu. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Swung on and missed, and that's the final out of the inning. White Sox able to draw a bit closer thanks to this home run. We played three full. It's the Astros three and the White Sox one. Start of the fourth upcoming, but first, Heidi Watney is standing by with a report. Thanks, Matt. I talked with Astros manager A.J. Hinch between innings specifically about his club's offense to this point. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've been able to push across three runs to this point, but they've also made the opposition work extremely hard. He's thrown a lot of pitches, and they think they're going to have a good opportunity to push across a lot more runs as he tires or as they get into that bullpen. Okay, thank you, honey. Ready to take his hacks again. Robinson Chirinos as he'll look to follow up the two-run homer he launched over the wall last time up. Well, Matt, this is one of the problems. This guy's a good fast. Now a drive by Chirinos. Deep left field. Garcia is going to get back and he'll put this one away on the warning track well, for the first the out. First Tyler. Tyler White will bat White. next. So far, 0 for 1 with a fly out. Tried to crush that ball, and now perhaps needs to shorten up with two strikes. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a ball lifted in the air toward the line and right. And that'll get down for a base hit. Well, that's what's so disappointing as a pitcher, oh, D-Row. You make a really good pitch, field. and yet this guy's so big and so strong, he's oh. able to muscle it into right field for a base hit. Yeah, you hand your batting gloves to the first base coach right there, and you thank your lucky stars. That's a nice A-B. Into the box, Jake Marisnik. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. He's had command of his pitches all day, hasn't walked a soul, but we find ourselves in a three ball count here. Want to see how aggressive he gets in the zone. He's set, now the pitch. Line hard toward right center. That's in another base hit. He's two for two. Hey, listen, as a pitcher, when you fall behind with three balls, you want to come in there and throw a strike, and sometimes you're going to give up a base hit. Yeah, Danny, that's the name of the game from the Get offensive it. standpoint. Work yourself, count leverage, man. 2-0, 3-0, 3-1, buy yourself that pot committed fastball and cheat. Stepping in now, Jason Kipnis. Good plate discipline to lay off the slider that time, and he draws even a two and two. A couple of righties starting to loosen now in the bullpen. The two two fouled off. The 2-2 two -two one more time is taken, ball three. Looked like he tried to elevate a fastball on that 2-2 two -two pitch there, but kind of overdid it. With a pitch that high, it's pretty easy to lay off if you're the hitter. Neither guy willing to give in, and the ad battle continue. Three, two, one more time. Fouled away. Three to one is our score here in inning number four. 
And he finally wins the battle as this is swung on and missed for the second out. Yeah, as they say, there's a hole in his swing in that location. So a good job there of exploiting that. That can be real hard for some guys to overcome when teams start figuring out what locations you just can't handle. Into the box now, Michael Brantley. And it's one and two. Hey, he's done an amazing job of settling down. Two innings ago, I thought they were going to run him out of here. But now he's close to posting two shutout innings as a response. White on second. Marisnik at first, two out in the inning. And it's two balls and two strikes now. He's set. Here's the 2-2. Just hung in there on that one. Working for the punch out and the offering. Hit out towards second. And an underhanded throw is in time for out number three. Two left for the Astros, but they hang on to a 3-1 lead. Just about set to go for the last of the fourth. But before we do that, here's Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. I had a chance to talk with White Sox manager Rick Renteria between innings about his thoughts on his lineup's performance. And flat out, he was very pleased with the quality of their at-bats. Yes, they've only scored one run, but he said they've done a great job of forcing the pitch count up, and he thinks that's going to lead to more offense for them as this game goes on. Good stuff, Heidi. Thanks. Leading off the inning, Daniel Polka, and they'll need him to get something going here. Things not looking very good so far in this one, but we're still in the middle innings. They're down by a couple of runs, and this would be the right place and the right time to get something going. The last thing they want to do is to try to come from behind and win this one in the eighth or ninth inning. Two balls and a strike now. Three balls and a strike to the Chicago leadoff hitter. I know this team has been struggling offensively, but here's a perfect situation with a 3-1 count. You have a chance to do some damage. You know you're getting a guaranteed fastball. The count is full. Three and two to the White Sox DH. The 3-2 pitch is swung on and missed. He got him. Boy, he's really on a roll in the, the hill right, right now. Number As seven. we roll through it again, remember, Aaron. he struck out the side in the Aaron. last inning, and now he picks up right where he left off by striking off the leadoff man here. Let's see if he can keep this going for a little bit. No okay. offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. One run on three hits. One error thus far for the White Sox. Well, Not close with that when it's way above the strike zone. Right there is a temptation pitch. Power hitters like this are looking for pitches that they can drive. So that may have been one where he was trying to get him to chase up above the zone a little bit. And it's fouled away. The 3-2 pitch. Pitch swung on and hit in the air. Toward the line in right. Reddick will wait on it. Two gone. Now batting. Third baseman. You are. Moncada. Digging in the switch hitter. Yohan Moncada. He'll swing it from the left side right here. One run on three hits. One error thus far for the White Sox. And a slider misses here. Two balls and a strike. Two and two.
No offer on that one, and Verlander's run at full down, three and two. And that's lifted the other way out to left. Brantley ghosts under it, and the inning is over. Down in order go the White Sox. Score holds, it's three to one. Striding in, Josh Reddick. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. And that's the first out of the inning. Now batting, second baseman, Jose Altuve. Here's the second baseman, Jose Altuve. Two balls and a strike to Jose Altuve. Even at two and two. Just missed with the two two count, and it runs it's full now. Try to hold back, but he won't be able to as that's ruled a swing, and there are two away now. A lot of indecision there on that check swing, and that's something you see quite a lot on three and two. When the difference between striking out and drawing the walk in can be an inch or two, it's pretty understandable why guys aren't always aggressive with their swings. Swing, but that's in there for strike three anyway, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Astros, and it's still three to one. Here's the catcher, Wellington Castillo, as we move past the halfway point in this one and begin the bottom of the fifth. Now the one and one pitch. Misses for the second ball. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Reddick has a read on it. Makes the play one away. The batter number eight. Shortstop. Tim. Anderson. And that'll bring up the shortstop, Tim Anderson. He got a hold of one and went yard in his first appearance in this one. The last at bat, Matty V, we heard this guy's a good fastball hitter. He got a fastball and didn't miss it. We'll see if they pitch him a little bit differently this time and mix oh, in some off speed down. pitches. And it's two balls and a strike for Tim Anderson. Now the 2-1. It's the outside corner for the second strike. We're seeing him in an absolute groove out there in the mound right now. Retired seven straight, and mechanically, he looks really consistent and fluid to me. And he struck him out. Strikeout number eight now in the ballgame for him. Man, this the guy's on his game today, not only when he's throwing strikes, Riley. but how about the amount of strikeouts? What's Gia. even more impressive? No walks up to this point, so he's pounding that zone with strikes, and he's making these hitters swing the bat. In now, Leury Garcia. And that's a swinging strike three in the dirt. And that ends the inning. So they breeze through this half of the inning, 
We're through five here at the ballpark. It's the Astros three and the White Sox one. Kelvin Herrera from. takes over to start now the sixth inning the on the White mound. Side. Number 41, Kelvin Herrera. Now batting, Carlos Correa. Past meetings with Kelvin Herrera, he's one for four. Ready with the payoff pitch. Oh, and they really bunch him up on that one as he swings and misses for the first out. It's not that easy to make a good hitter look that bad, but that's what happens when you can bring that fastball and ride it in on the inner half of the plate right there. You can get some pretty ugly swings. Robinson Chirinos will dig in again, and as he does, we'll flash you back to inning number two as you get a look at his two run homer that was a big blow early on. We're in the sixth inning here in a three to one ball game. Maybe a little jumpy there as he swings through the fastball. You know that can really be an effective pitch for a guy that has a lot of pop. They're up there looking for a fastball up in the zone. So if you can place it a little above it they have a hard time getting the barrel up there. And he strikes him out as well. So make it back to back punch outs here to the first two men he faces out of the bullpen. No problems for him on the mound since he's come out of the pen to start this inning. That's back to back K's and he's making it look pretty easy. This has the makings of a good outing so far. Now the payoff pitch home. And this one misses inside a ball. He walked him, and they've got themselves a two out base runner. The center fielder, number six, Jake. Here's Jake Marisnik. Past meetings with Kelvin Herrera. He's one for three. White, the runner at first with two gone. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. Two and one. Counts even a two and two to Marisnik. That pitch is in triple digits. I think he had to take that one because I'm not even sure he saw it. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. A swing and a ground ball to third. He's got to hurry, and as it turns out, the two-out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. One left for Houston as the lead remains 3-1. to one. So the lineup flips over and digging in, Tommy Pham. And Dan he and his fellow top-of-the-order hitters haven't really offered much help for this lineup so far. No, your one, two, three guys are the ones you look to to generate a lot of action, and they just haven't been up to the task so far in this one. Still time for them to turn it around, though. We'll see if it happens. Now the one and one pitch. Soft liner towards short, and one gone. The batter, number five, second baseman. Coming to the plate now, Yomer Sanchez. He started out the evening 0 for 2 so far. Count is 1 and 2 now. One out, nobody on. Fastball just inside. Well, two straight fastballs inside haven't put him away. So now it'll be interesting to see what he turns to. Don't quite know where that one missed, but it's not for me to decide. Three and two. 
with the meat of the order due up next, you could probably expect to see something you can handle here with the full count as the two-hole hitter. Hit out towards second. Backhanded. And an off-balance throw is in time as he takes one away. Wow. And this oh, is not an Chicago. easy play when you have to range to your right. He really okay. didn't have a chance to get I'll his feet set, you. so this is all arm. Nicely done. Standing in now, Jose Abreu. And that's low ball four. Well, these guys have had a hard time making contact all game long, racking up a bunch of K, so that's their first walk of the game. We'll see if that gets them going a bit. So to the plate is the White Sox DH, Daniel Polka. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the guy on the mound. He's getting paid to try and get you out as well. Anytime it gets up there, north of seven, eight pitch ABs, sometimes it just comes down to pure execution. Let's see if he makes the adjustment right here. And this is a fair ball as it'll make its way toward the 335 sign. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. As we take a look right at his fielder. numbers, Number a couple seven. of things jump out at Aaron. you. Definitely, Matt. He's been throwing it by guys Dang. the entire game, but that leads to some high pitch counts, and that's the case here. After that hit, you have to wonder if he's starting to get a little bit fatigued. Yeah, and in today's game, everyone seems to want to err on the side of caution in terms of pitch counts. Now the 2-1 pitch is looked at off the plate for a ball. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right-handers starting to loosen up. The 3-1 takes a strike for a full count now. Three and two. Two strikes. Abreu over at second. Polka on at first with two down. And that pitch misses for ball four. So some intrigue now as the bases are loaded here with two away. Man, that's just now painful that for a pitcher the right there. Baseman. A 3-2 offering that was right on the corner, but he couldn't get him to chase, and he doesn't get the call. Can't beat yourself up about that one too much. Stepping in now, Johan Moncada. Swing and a little blooper to center. Here comes Marisnik. One run is scored. And the tying run comes around to score from second. It's a 3-3 game. Hey, after being oh, down man. by two, getting into the middle of this one. That's a huge like base hit right there, d -Row. Big two RBI go. knock. Yeah, down by two right there, able to come through for the team. And we probably got an exciting finish on our hands. Digging in once again, Wellington Castillo. He struck out and flied out. 0 for 2 so far. Two down, runners at first and second. Two balls and a strike. This inning hasn't gone the way he wanted it to, but it's not a total disaster yet. Sometimes pitching is about damage control, so if he can strand these guys out there, that would be pretty huge. Good slider there gets a swing and miss. He will strike him out. Ten now in the ball game, and the inning is over. So two runs on two base hits, no errors, and two men left on base. On to the seventh now in game three, and we are all tied at three apiece. Back here on the south side of Chicago. On to the seventh now in game three, but before it gets underway, we take a look at our game summary through the first six. Juan Manaya is on the pitch from the please. bullpen now to start inning now number seven. For the White Sox. Number 37, Juan Manaya. Now at the plate, Jason Kipnis. 
He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. The one two is a sinker in the dirt. Two and two. Oh, and there's the good curveball as he set down on strikes for the second time here tonight. Well, we've seen some really good pitching from the these left guys left. in this one. The bullpen has looked sharp Michael and have backed up a nice Brent. effort turned in by the starter. These days, pitching has become a full staff effort, and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far. One two is an off speed pitch no dice it's two and two and some stirring now in the White Sox bullpen as it looks like a right handers up and throwing. Here now the two two is looked at and the count moves full. Walks are never good, but they're especially bad news late in games like this. It seems like they always come back to bite you. And he lays oh. off. Ball four. Now the potential go-ahead run is on base here. The batter, the right fielder. Stepping in is Josh Reddick. He could really use a knock here. 0 for 3 in the game so far. Possible go ahead runs on first, one away. One two pitch is a slider that misses two and two. Another 2-2 offering and a half-hearted attempt that time, but they'll say he broke the plane, and that's out number two. Oh, oh, yeah. Check swings are right there the next to Bang Bang Place at first okay. as the most oh, difficult yeah. calls for an ump to make. Taking a look at show motion, the batter doesn't appear to hold up enough, so I think the call was right. Next up for the Strohs, Jose Altuve. 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame. Now the one and one pitch he swung on and missed for strike number two. I'll tell you if I'm pitching right now I'm not throwing anything near the strike zone until these guys prove they can lay off it. They're just being way too aggressive. The one two is swung on and missed he got him. Astros lead one. No change in the score. It's three to three. Chris Davinsky gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Chris Davinsky. Into the box. Tim Anderson head to head against Chris Davinsky. He's one for five. The 1-1 home is taken for ball two. 
You like the modern style of baseball. Here it is. Both starters kept their teams in the game. It's close right now. Now we hand it over to the nasty. Now the 2 1 is in there for strike number two. The 2 2 is laid off and the count runs full been a great job so far by the eight hole hitter if he finds a way to get on base this could spell for a huge inning the three two pitch ground ball left side Redman loves it and there's one away Better Not a lot you can do with that pitch. That fastball Play just ate in. him up inside Guard and gets the Zia. soft grounder for the out. Standing in, Leury Garcia. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. Now the pitch. And a slider runs in on him as he has to lean out of the way. The 2 1 pitch. And he gets a piece here as this ball is fouled away. Got him swinging. Chased it well out of the zone, and there are two gone. That was a big strikeout there, guys. The best Don't pitchers have there. the ability to strike Bobby. guys out when they really need to. Yeah. And that second out was really important at this point of the game. Could be something we look back on later when the game's over. Into the box, Tommy Pham. And he fouls this one off. Bases are empty here with two men out. Is put in play to the right side of the infield. Altuve is right there on to first. And this will remain a tie ball game as the inning is over. So they go quietly here in this half inning. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. And we are all tied at three apiece. Your Nate Jones please. has been summoned from now the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 65, Nate Jones. And that'll bring up the former first rounder, Alex Bregman. And this tie ball game is a battle of the bullpens now, and I'm sure you're enjoying that, Dan. Bullpens are such a big part of baseball now, Matt. All these teams have such good seventh, eighth, and ninth inning guys. It all boils down to whose bullpen is better. The 1 1 is a fastball that misses. Jones, a Kentucky born ball player. He was a fifth round pick back in the draft of 2007. Hey, when you come out of the middle round, you have to grind for everything, and that's exactly what this guy has done, and he has turned himself into a solid big league ball player. Now the 2-1 takes a pass and misses. That's strike two. Action in the White Sox bullpen now as they have a left-hander getting loose. He's set. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And it's up to a 3-2 full count now. I think if he executes that pitch on the corner instead of off of it, he probably gets some pretty weak contact, if anything. He jammed him pretty hard on the previous pitch, so my bet was he was going to try to cheat on the inside part, thinking it might be coming again. Fouled off. The next 3-2. And he lays off. Ball four. Now the potential go-ahead run is on base here. 
Man, when the game is tied, the last thing you can afford to do is walk the leadoff hitter. Got to focus on getting that ground ball now. Digging in, Carlos Correa. He went down on strikes last time up. Yeah, and kind of shocked he got blown away with a fastball. You could tell he was late on that one. And we'll see if he tries to cheat to something this A.B. Now the three and two pitch. And he misses with it, ball four. So the potential go-ahead run moves into scoring position now. The batter, the catcher, Robinson. Now at the plate, Robinson Chirinos. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. A bouncer up the middle. Bare-handed for one. On the first to complete the double play. It's hard to do anything with a pitch like that that's below the zone. And if you do do anything with it, most of the time, this will be the result a double play on a good pitch down in the zone. Into the box now, Tyler White is put in play to the right side of the infield. Sanchez, over to his left. Off balance throw gets him. Nice play there as the side is retired. A couple of walks, but no damage. More baseball on MLB Network right after this. Ready now, Yomer Sanchez. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. Here's the 3 1. 3-1 is a fastball, and he can't connect 3-2. and two. When you get yourself to a 3-1 count and you get a fastball, those are the ones you really want to punish. Couldn't get the bat on it, so we'll see if that comes back to haunt him. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and that's the first out. Tie ball game here in the eighth at guaranteed right it. field as First you get a look at our line score to this point. I'll bring you. Ready once again, Jose Abreu. 0 for 2 for him to this point. Two and one the count to the White Sox first baseman. Ready to deal. Here's the two one. Fouled away. Line hard to center field. And that's in for a base hit. Make it a one for three game so far. That's what we refer to in the biz as a hanger right there. He's lucky he's the getting his baseball back. Daniel Polka. Now the 2-1 pitch is swung on and missed, and that's strike two. If you're going to catch up to a high fastball like that, it's all about getting that front foot down in enough time to allow your hands to start moving forward. He was way too late there. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. He struck him out the third time he's fanned in the game. The right fielder, number seven, Eric. So it's a runner at first with two Thames. men out. And in steps the lefty power threat, Eric Thames. Thames. 
swing and a miss, and that ends the inning. A man left for the White Sox, still tied 3-3. Three to three. Tony Kemp is going to come on and pinch hit here, and this is an important at bat, leading things off in the ninth in a tie ball game. Tony Kemp. One, two. Popped him up. Anderson is calling for it. One down. Now back. Designated hitter. Jason. Next will be the designated hitter, Jason Kipnis. Career numbers against Nate Jones. He's gone two for five. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Got him. And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. Talk about blown out by a guy. Geez, I mean, that fastball was way behind him when the swing came through the zone. I have to think he was looking for something off speed, and he just couldn't pull the trigger on that fastball. In now, Michael Brantley. And it's two balls and two strikes now. Oh, and look at this. High in the air and deep. And when this ball comes down, they'll have taken the lead. Home run. A solo shot here to straightaway right field as they take the lead 4-3. to three. Just an absolutely amazing home run there. Certainly worthy of the show track treatment. And as you can see, 114 miles an hour off the bat. And that should give you a pretty good indication as to how well he connected on that swing. Garcia is after it. He gets there to make the catch. And that ends the inning. And some dramatics here in the top of the ninth as this home run gives him the lead. Last chance coming up here for the White Sox. It's now a 4-3 Houston lead. Tony Kemp will stay in the ball game as he takes over in center. Now playing center field. Number 18. Tony Digging in now, Yohan Moncada. He'll lead it off with his guys needing a ninth inning rally here if they're going to force a game four. The one and one pitch. And he'll just fight this one off as it's chopped foul. Now the one and two pitch. Swing and a miss, and that'll get a groan from the home supporters here. One away. One of the toughest pitches to hit, the straight changeup, oh, right? El Chicago. Combio. Hadn't the seen it in that entire at bat. Well, like and what happens? Gets the string Can't pulled on him go. right there. Had no chance to put that ball in play. Stepping in now, Wellington Castillo. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. Well, he's really rolling Stop on the mound right now. Eight. All you have to do Switch is look up. at the last four hitters yeah. for evidence. All four of them going down on strikes as you're seeing here. That's not easy to do, so you know he's got to be pretty dialed in out there. Counts a ball and two strikes to the White Sox shortstop. The White Sox down to their last strike. Has them down to their final strike. Here it comes. Swing and he pops him up. This should do it. And start the celebration. The Astros are off to the ALCS. Well, they know their work is nowhere close to being finished. 
but they've handled their business so far, winning here to punch their ticket to the ALCS and a possible trip to the World Series. Well done. The big bat tonight for the Astros belonged to this man, Michael Brantley. Talk about a worthy recipient. He's our tops player of the game. Multi-hit game, and one of them was a dinger. That's a solid day's work for any hitter, and it had an impact on the outcome of this game. What else can you say? For the left-hander Dan Plezak, Mark DeRosa, and our entire crew, this is Matt Vaskersian. This has been the American League Division Series. Fans, our final line score tonight. First for the victorious Astros. Four runs. Hello, baseball fans. Thanks for joining us on this October morning. Here's what's going on around the league as the postseason rolls on. In Game 4 of the American League Division Series, the Cleveland Indians defeated the visiting Yankees, clinching the series and stamping their ticket to play in the ALCS. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll be back here tomorrow and all postseason long.